Hey folks, good morning. Dave here for Thunder Mesa Studio in Jerome, Arizona. Today I'm up at the 300 level of the old United Verde Copper Mine open pit. And today we're doing a little ghost railroad hunting to see if we can find any remnants of the old railroads that used to service the mine and the town of Jerome up here. Right out my studio window, looking across the canyon here, see that old tailings pile? Well, that's the old right-of-way of the Verde Tunnel and Smelter Railroad. Back up at the 300 level, here's the tail end of that right-of-way as it approaches the United Verde Mines open pit and Jerome Station. Now, the Verde Tunnel and Smelter Railroad was a standard gauge railroad which operated up here between Clarkdale and Jerome between 1920 and about 1953. But now we're going to head back a little further in time, back to the 1890s, because I want to go check out the old railroad grade of the three-foot gauge United Verde and Pacific, the narrow gauge line that connected Jerome to the outside world in 1895. Now if you head out the road from Jerome towards the old Gold King Mine, which is kind of a tourist attraction out here, and you turn right at the fork, you'll see a sign that says Primitive Road. Caution, use at your own risk. This surface is not regularly maintained. This is actually uh, County Road number 72, Perkinsville Road. So right now we are driving on top of what was the railroad grade for the United Verde and Pacific Railroad, a three foot narrow gauge railroad that was chartered in 1894, completed in 1895. It ran 26 miles from a place called Jerome Junction on the other side of the mountains here in what is now Chino Valley. And Jerome Junction was where the Santa Fe, Prescott, and Phoenix Railway came through, a standard gauge railroad. Now when I drive on this road, I like to imagine myself back in those days in one of those old wooden coaches or wooden parlor cars creaking along, rocking back and forth on those narrow gauge rails through this canyon. The scenery itself really hasn't changed that much. This is Horseshoe Canyon, one of the highlights of the old United Verde and Pacific, where the hairpin turn was so sharp that it was said that the engineer could almost reach out of the cab and shake hands with the conductor in the caboose on the other side of the canyon. Now at this point, the old railroad grade branches off and heads kind of northeast towards Chino Valley, around on the other side of the mountains there. And it gets uh, considerably rougher from here, so this is about as far as we're gonna go today. Well, I guess it's time to head back down to Jerome, back to the studio, see if I can get some work done today. But it was really nice to come out here, share this with you, see the old uh, railroad grade of the United Verde and Pacific, and imagine ourselves back in time, back in 1900 or 1910, riding those narrow gauge rails into Jerome. And speaking of rails, it's time to get some track laid in the new calico section, where I'll show you a couple of tips and tricks that I picked up to make the job go more smoothly. On the Thunder Mesa layout, I often use flush rail connections between between the different modules or sections of the layout and what that means is that you've got a uh, flush cut on the track butting up against the next piece of track on the next module so it's cut off even with the end of the module 
And uh, that doesn't present any problem really on straight track. But when you get to a curve, you have a little bit of a difficulty because flex track usually doesn't stay in the uh, position that you flex it to. It, it, it flexes back. It won't hold that curve. Say you want an 18 inch or 22 inch radius curve, it won't hold that curve uh, once you cut it on a curve. So the solution I came up with is to use HO scale sectional track. The nice thing about the uh, HO scale sectional track is that these rails are machined to this radius. So even when you take them out of the ties, they're going to hold this shape. They're going to hold this same radius. And so then you can put one on one module like this and another on another module and they will line up and you'll keep that, that curved shape. And, uh, but first I want to remove it from these HO ties and put some ON30 ties on there uh, so it matches the rest of the track. And that's pretty quick and easy. Just do this. Naturally, it's important to use a rail that's the same height as the other track, or the other rail on your layout that you want to join up with. And this is Atlas Code 100, which is exactly the same height as Pico Code 100. And the next step is to slide it into uh, these ties here. Just line it up. Usually start with the outside rail of the curve first. Just slide it in, make sure you don't miss any of the molded on rail spikes here. Slide it under each one, one by one. Okay, now we've got our short section of curved ON30 track, which I'm going to use right here on the calico section. And this will connect to another piece just like it on the other side of the backdrop, which will go to the staging yard. Now I'll go ahead and install the module's one and only turnout. I almost never solder the connections between a turnout and approaching sections of track, or on straight sections either. This is to allow for expansion and contraction during changes in humidity. Now I am going to solder this connection right here uh, between this piece of flex track and this curved section of track to make this a nice smooth curve. Just like that. Now I want to clean up any leftover flux here. A little denatured alcohol. Now for a few strategically placed Atlas track nails to hold this tight 16 inch radius curve right where I need it to stay. Now when all this track is painted and ballasted and detailed, you won't see these spike heads at all. You always want to check and recheck that curve, make sure there's no kinks and it's nice and smooth. Now right here where the flex track meets the turnout, I'm going to mark where I need to cut and a little fine point sharpie is uh, really good for that. Now to cut the rail, I'm going to use these uh, flush cutting rail nippers right here. Make sure that the flat side is on the direction that you need it to be. Since this is a lime frog turnout, I'm going to follow the manufacturer's instructions and put some insulated rail joiners right here to prevent a short circuit when power is fed from the other direction. Just like that. Oh, 
always build myself in a little bit of wiggle room. Especially where the uh, track meets up with the turnouts. Now I can finish up and lay this spur track in here. On this team siding, I'm going to go through and I'm going to remove some of the ties just to give it the look that it's a little bit more hastily laid than the mainline track over here. Now I'll take some of the ties I removed and just slide them underneath these connections to give this a more finished look. And when I ballast the track later, the glue for the ballast will hold these in place. things work. Well, okay. All the new track is now laid here from Calico Junction across the gulch into Calico Town and off through the tunnel to regions beyond. Well, all right. I think that's going to wrap it up for this time. Uh, in a future date, I'll uh, go into more detail about how I wire everything, but right now I just want to solder on a couple of leads here and get some trains running through here again. Adios for now. If you're interested in more information about the railroads here in Jerome, and particularly the old United Verde and Pacific Railroad, I highly recommend this book by Russell Wallman. It's uh, probably out of print now, but if you can get your hands on a copy, by all means, uh, have a look at this book. It's, a, it's just a, a wellspring of great information on the old mining days and narrow gauge days here in Jerome.